Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a Dreams Gadget tutorial. Um, today we're looking at the Mover Gadget and probably the Advanced Mover as well because they are pretty much the same gadget, just one's got a little bit more um, sliders in it than the other. But uh, the basics of this is this gadget will move objects around your level and you can determine the direction, the speed um, and and how long these things move for by creating microchips and using this moving gadget. Right, so like most gadgets, again, we have an option on this page to either wire to an effective object like so, or you can use R2, L1, release R2 and stamp it onto your object. Either way is fine. And if you lift that off, you get a wire from your gadget to your object. So you've seen that all before if you've been following my tutorials so you know that that is the method of um, affecting objects. Mm. Right then, uh, what does the mover do? Well, let, let's just affect this object without doing anything, just looking at the default settings. Uh, we have uh, five meters a second, a movement strength of 50, damping of 50, and that's it. And then on this page, the damping is all at 100%. So let's see what happens to our cube with a movement sensor on it. Here we go. It's moving along the x-axis at speed. And that will continue. Let me just do that. It will continue to move that object. Now then, let's have a look at our object itself. This object is not a movable object. Turn it into a movable object. And your object is suddenly affected by gravity as well as the mover. So it moves at a completely different speed and of course it will fall off the edge of your world. So that's, you can put a movement um, on a on a sculpt but obviously you have to bear in mind the gravity and you might need to change things like strength and dampening in order to get to move. So if we move the movement strength up, the gravity has little effect of that. So that, um, and that was something that I wasn't aware of when I um, said about gyroscope. Um, so uh, thank you for, uh, sorry, I can't remember who, who said. Um, the, the gyroscope I said um, didn't work because of the gravity. I didn't realise that if you change the strength, um, then it does overwrite the gravity. But at its default setting, it does it struggles a bit. So there we go. Um, so you can um, affect a movable object. It doesn't have to be a movable object, though, to move. As you can see, this is moving perfectly fine and it's not a movable object. Selecting something to be a movable object is more about imp interaction than anything else. So, um, it this is not just to say this is not dependent on the object being movable. This is important to note. Right then, um, the direction of travel uh, is dependent on this arrow here. This is our x arrow, and if we were to change it, change the angle, and then move we're going to move up like that so you can alter whoops I'm not selecting this I want to select this right you can alter which way X is with the gizmo and now it will move in that direction right but how do you make it move for a, a short period of time and then stop Right, okay, so let me show you a few things. Right. I'm going to put in a timeline. And I'm going to move my moving gadget into my timeline. And I'm going to get it to play for just one second. So there we go. It moved for that one second along that x-axis. Now, let's say you wanted to uh, do 
a series of movements. How could you do that? Well, this gizmo is now not going to really work because I can't change it. Um, let's see, can I change it with the keyframe? No. This will not allow you to change the uh, the direction on the gizmo with a keyframe. So you can't do it that way. So how would you get it to change directions and what have you? Right. Now, on this last page here, we have direction of movement and you have an input socket. So all we need to do is tell it which direction we want these things to move in into our mover. So let's, first of all, let's see what direction on the outputs there actually are. So if I get a splitter and we'll get some number displayers, we'll need three of them. And we're going to put in the direction of movement into our splitter and immediately it splits into A, B and C. So we put A in there, B in there, C in there. And we'll display those up here. Look, so that one, that one, and that one. There we go. So when when we're moving, you can see X movement is one zero zero. But the different because it's moving on the X, so that one is the movement on the X. This is the movement on the Y and this is the movement on the Z. So you can do something really um, quite interesting. Right, let's put in some value sliders. Uh, wrong one, green ones. There we go, value slider. Let's put a couple of value sliders in. Okay, we'll make this one a zero and this one a one. And I'm going to put a combiner in and set that to three. Right, so we already know that one zero zero is movement on the X axis. So if we put the one on the Y axis and the zero on those two, Then we're going to copy our mover, put that on there, open that up, we can close that one off, open that one up, okay, go to the last page, we're going to put our output of our combiner into the input of our direction, so, and we're going to make sure our block is the affected object for that mover. So you can see what I'm doing. So um, this is now sending a fat wire into our mover, uh, which is saying move on the Y axis. So we've got so many gadgets in the way. It's gonna be hard to see what it's doing. Right, okay, uh, there we go. So turn it on moving on the X and then it's moving on the Y. There we go. And if we do the same again, so we get a combiner and we'll put the one on the Z or the Z if you're an American. And we'll put another one in. And you notice all of our wires get removed every time we copy that mover, so we have to put more back in again. Right, let's go behind here, so we go along, up, and forwards. And obviously if you use minus numbers, it will go in the other direction, so instead of going this way, it's going to go that way, or it's going to go that way, or it's going to go that way. So. That's how you can set up a sequence in a timeline with a movable object and you can use those. 
And um, you don't have to. So if you wanted to, um, you can move in multiple directions. So um, different numbers was going to do different things. Um, but uh, if I was to do um, instead of which one is that? That's the, the second one. The second one, if I instead of doing a zero on the X, I do two ones, a one, one and a zero. Let's see what that does. It moves diagonally because it's moving both the one and uh, moving the um, the X and the Y at the same time. So it moved diagonally up. Now, the other way you can do that, let me just put those back to how they were. Um, the other way to do that is to put these two movers together on the timeline. And now they'll do both movements at the same time. And you get that diagonal movement. So there's lots of ways that you can do it. Dreams is very versatile and there are different ways that you can move things around. Um, I mean, I've chosen to use these combiners. You can uh, make it neater by sticking, sticking your combiners. Make sure you get them in the right places. I think there's that one for that one. Um, that one's for that one, isn't it? There we go. There we go. So you can put them in. Um, make sure you get them all nice and lined up so they'll work. There we are. Uh, that's how you can easily program movement without using an action recorder. Because the other way of doing it, of course, is to use an action recorder and move it around physically. But if you want it to look nice and crisp and precise and moving in in a in a direction that you want it to, um, this is this is an option. So that was the, what's the movement thing do so let's have a look at the little tweaks that you can do so we have speed at the top that's very obvious um so we can change the speed let me let me just let's just delete all of these now that we've done it <laughs> okay i don't need my timeline anymore i don't need these anymore let's not worry about these but Okay, so here's our mover. Now, speed. You can increase the speed, like so. You can reduce the speed so it moves slowly. Okay, so that can all be done, and that can be um, affected in the game because you've got an input wire, so you can change it within the game, just send a new number, and that can change the speed um, at any point. And again, in a timeline, you can change the speed in a timeline at any point using a calculator or uh, a value slider or something like that. So there we go. Forward speed um, changes the speed. Now, movement strength also changes the speed. So if I was to put the movement strength down to 7, that's not moving. It moves, it starts moving at 17, 25, there we go. And as we get a stronger movement, the faster it goes. Um, it's not really speed. What it is is the strength of the push. But um, but you can see how that's affecting the block. Overall damping also affects appears to affect the speed. So at this time, the further over to the right it is, um, the slower it will be. The further over to the left it is. This is just movement, overall dampening of of the movement. So all of these three basically do the same thing to the block um, as you see it, but it does it in different ways. So one is, is the strength of the push and the other one is the push back, if you like, the damping um, of, of the block. Um, and this is just the forward speed. So um, they all do roughly the same thing. So you can choose to um, move these around um, to get the effect that you want. And uh, damping specifics. Um, this is dampening in a particular um, 
direction. So if I was to turn the dampening off, that's what happens. If I dampen the X, it's a little slower. If I dampen the Y, you shouldn't see any difference because we're not moving in the Y axis. And again with the Z, it won't show any difference because it's for the Z axis only. So um, these are individual dampenings and these are mover direction dampings. So whichever direction the thing is moving in, that's the, the entire damping. The chances of you needing to use these um, as opposed to using these, I'm not sure. Um, I don't do an awful lot of physics um, based things. So um, somebody who's making a game that, 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 that uh, uses these a lot will probably be able to explain uh, the purpose of these a little bit more than I do. Um, just to say that this is just dampening. So this is the pushback, if you like, of movement in a particular direction. Um, we've already gone through this. this is the affected object and the direction of movement so we've done the entire thing apart from local space now local space is an interesting one um i put in some a rotation on an object which is um one of the the gadgets in here and uh it, i had it rotating um round um like a wheel and then i placed that uh, object into another level and it was suddenly turning uh like a disc like a like a record um which is not what i wanted and the reason it was doing that is because i didn't use local space to do my movement so um if you're making it in the level and you're using the XYZ of the level then you probably won't have this issue and you probably won't need to press that button but if you've saved this and then you've moved it into a level where everything's differently orientated then um, you may need to stick that on uh, but an interesting effect is uh, so I'm going to have that X there and I'm going to turn local space on you'll notice they've slightly changed so I'm just going to alter the X for local space. Okay, so I'm now going to move it and it's going to do that diagonal. And I turn it off, it does that way. Turn it on, diagonal, turn it off, that way. Turn it on, diagonal, turn it off, that way. And you can turn this on and off with an input wire. So this is very handy. So you have two different directions in one object in one gadget. That could be very useful. And you could use that for a button press. So it will move in this direction until you press a button and then off it goes. So um, that is very useful. So you've got two different directions actually embedded into uh, an object. If you're placing them in into this level and you're making it in this level, then you won't have that uh, the, the problem with it orientated wrongly and you have to change to local space. But um, there we go. You can always fiddle about with the gizmos if you find that it is moving in the wrong direction. But you might have noticed a little edit there. Um, I forgot to do the advanced mover, which, um, to be honest, uh, is pretty much the same gadget, except it has extra options. So um, in the... Let's have both of them up at the same time. Uh, on the first page, um, you've got forward speed, movement strength, overall dampening. Um, this, you've got speeds on each of the axes. Strength is for overall movement strength and then you've got dampening on all of the axes. So that's why it's an advanced mover. It's giving you more options to change dampening and speed on individual axes, but that is the only difference. It doesn't have direction of movement output. So to be honest with you, as an advanced mover, 
not having this particular uh, option here is uh, next to blimmin useless so <laughs> um the, these extra extra things uh you've lost a really important one so uh, i think that's a mistake i think that should be in the advanced mover um otherwise it's not particularly advanced it's actually less good as, as this particular gadget even though it's got these extra things um so there we go uh so thank you for watching and i uh, hope that was useful for you and i'll catch you in your dreams